Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a Singleton Audio Manager that I've been working on. So if you don't know what a Singleton is, it's an object that should exist only once inside of your game scene. So using the script, you're able to create a Singleton object, but it's created not as a mono behavior, which is attached to one of your objects in your game scene. So if you want to check out the script and go ahead and download it, I have it available over at Gumroad. You can find the link to download in the description. You don't necessarily have to pay anything. And yep, you can just go ahead and follow these instructions. Uh, hopefully combined with this video, you can get it working for yourself. But you actually create it as a resource file, a scriptable object that gets put in here and then created as soon as your game loads. So in order for the script to work, we need a library called yeah Singleton, which is available for free over on the asset store. So you can find it in here just by searching YA Singleton, which is yet another Singleton. And uh, we import that into our project after downloading it. So if you don't feel the need to have the examples, you can just cut those out here. And then you only need these yeah Singleton scripts. So I'm going to import those all to our game project, which should resolve any of the errors that the audio manager is having. So now that it's in our project, all the error messages have gone away and uh, we can start working on the scene here. So the idea here is that we're going to have an audio manager, which does not need to be attached to anything in the game scene. It'll be created as soon as the game starts. And we can call the audio manager, the instance of it, from anywhere in any script at any time. And when we call those sound effects on the audio manager, the audio manager will create audio sources on the object calling it or whichever transform we assign for it. So we don't even need to have audio sources attached to scripts anymore. So without the need to add an audio manager directly onto the scene and we don't need audio sources for the most part anymore, it, it will help clean up your inspector quite a bit because let's be honest, there are a lot of sound effects that are going to need to be played in your game. So the idea of this basic scene here is we're going to have this button here, which is a shop purchase button. I'll update the text of that button just to make it a little bit clearer. And when we click on this button, it's going to play a sound effect without even having an audio source inside the inspector over here. And the text over here should update with the number of items left in the shop. But before we write the simple script, we should set up audio mixers inside of our game project. So in audio mixer, I'm going to click to add a new audio mixer and we'll call this the master mixer. So the master mixer is going to be the final output channel for all of our audio. So inside of this master mixer, we're going to want a couple new groups added to it so that we can separate our sound effects channel and our music channel. So I'm going to hit plus here and we're going to create the sound group and one for the music group. So now we have three outputs for our audio. Generally, we'll output our sound effects to the sound and our music to music. And then those will eventually go through the master volume for controlling the overall game volume. Now, in order for these to work, we need to expose the volume parameters. So in order to do that, we right click on the volume for the master sound and music and click expose volume and we should rename these variables to correspond with the audio manager script so it's going to be master sound for the volume of master music volume for the volume of music and then sound volume for the volume of sound so let's do that here master sound oh sorry master volume i mean music volume and then sound volume. Okay, so the reason we did all that is because the audio manager will output sounds to the right channels for us, um, but also calling the audio manager, you can use the set volume function in association with a slider bar to adjust the volume on the audio channels. And you can see here master volume, sound volume, music volume, exactly as we set up with the exposed parameters. And then doing this will change the decibel count on each of those three channels here, master sound music. Um, by default, it goes down to negative 20 decibels at volume of one and then completely muted at zero. But you can change that parameter in the scriptable object later when we create it, if you need it to be even more quiet than that. So for the rest of this video, we're simply going to make it so that when the on click event is called on the button, it's going to call the shop script, which I'm going to add right here, shop purchase. 
and it's going to run the purchase item, which will create an audio source and play the sound clip that we associate with this. Now the script I've created does take a text uh, object, so I'm going to assign the text here. So whenever we buy an item, it's going to automatically update the number in stock up here. Okay, so here's the simple shop script I've set up for us already. So in theory, what this script would do is spend the player money, add the item to the player's inventory, subtract the item from the shop inventory. But because this is about the audio function of it, we're going to focus on calling the audio manager. So in order to do that, we do audio manager dot instance dot play. So we pull the audio manager from my Chris tutorials namespace. So it should be audio manager dot instance. And then we can call all the methods which exist inside of the audio manager without directly referencing a mono behavior or any object in our scene. Uh, this will be automatically created once again when the game loads. So all we really need to do here is call the play function, which you can see has quite a few overloads. Um, but at the simple level, we just need to play an audio clip. So purchase clip, which we haven't created in the script yet. And then the emitter will be the transform. Uh, so we can just use the transform of this game object. So it's whatever game object the shop script is attached to. And that's pretty much it. So next, we need to have this audio clip available for us. So public audio clip declared at the top. And we'll call it purchase clip, which is the sound effect where an item gets purchased and we want that to play. So now back in the inspector, we have the purchase clip and we want to set that to a sound effect inside of our scene. Now you probably want to actually name your sounds a little better than that, but uh, for now that should suit our purposes. So this is just a little blip effect uh, pulled in from the BFXR sound effect generator, which is a pretty cool tool. So now what's going to happen is this audio manager is going to play the sound effect with an instantly created uh, audio source at the transform of whatever game object this shop script is attached to. Note that it doesn't have to be this game object. You could easily reference any other game objects transform in uh, inside of your scene. Okay, but one last thing we do need to do is actually create the scriptable object asset. So uh, the audio manager is created as an asset inside of your actual game project. So we go to assets, create, and I have this in a custom singletons menu up here at the top. So we just create the audio manager. And now with this audio manager, all we need to do is assign groups here. So the master group, the master mixer, the music group, and the sound group. And we've already created all of those over here in the audio mixer tab. So the master group is going to be this one up here at the top called master. The master mixer is going to be the only mixer, the master mixer which we created. And then music group, obviously, is going to be selected right there. And then sound is there. And that's all the setup we need for this audio manager. So now the last thing we need to do is actually assign the shop's uh, purchase method to this on click event here. So for the button, I'm going to add a new delegate and we're going to reference the shop game object, pull in that shop script, purchase item. And uh, now we should be able to run this scene and test it out. So in order to watch this, I'm going to be looking at the audio mixers and we should see some uh, sound appear in master and sound. And you can see it's playing through the sound channel by default, which finally gets outputted through master. And we can keep doing this until there's no more items in the shop. But obviously after that, you can't purchase. So at this point, you might be wondering, how is the audio manager working without even having a mono behavior object inside of the scene? Well, yeah, Singleton creates this object called Singleton Updater on load. And all of the singletons, which are created referencing the yeah, Singleton script, uh, are basically pulled in. So this single script uses the game objects in order to manage everything that needs to happen for audio manager. And this is created on load by default in any scene that you have Yeah Singleton enabled. So essentially it just automatically brings in all of your Yeah Singleton Singleton objects, which is really, really cool. So at this point, I think I'll do a part two video showing you guys how to adjust the sound levels using this audio manager script. Uh, it shouldn't be too complicated, mostly you just have to reference the set volume function. Now one more thing you might be wondering before we go is how do you play music? Well, you would simply call the audio manager dot instance dot play loop function, which can be called in the same way. So you could do purchase clip and transform. 
you can see the rest of the parameters have defaults, so you don't actually need to change that. So we could just leave it at that. And in this case, it would very annoyingly play that purchase clip over and over again. So you'd probably want more of an actual song here. But that's how you play music, and that's how you play sound effects, at least at a very basic level. So of course, if you have any more confusion, you can, of course, look through the script itself. In my part two of this video, I will show you guys how to set up a simple audio adjustment menu where you can control the sound levels of the master volume, the sound volume, and the music volume for your game using what we've already set up here today. So once again, if you want to find the script for download, I have it over at Gumroad. You'll just need to download the Singleton audio script here, which you don't have to pay any money for if you don't want to. Grab the uh, Singleton library, follow along with this tutorial, and you should be good to go. So that's going to be it till the next video where we work on setting up the options menu for controlling audio volume. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.